Given that, my next goal is to introduce Michael Turner, the president of the American Physical Society. Uh, I'll note that, that Michael's a West Coast guy. He did his uh, undergraduate at Caltech and his PhD here at Stanford in the physics department in 1978. He graduated and then off to the University of Chicago where he does cos cosmology and, and physics of the universe and is the director of a Kaipak inst uh, Kavli Institute at the University of Chicago. What really matters in his presentation this morning is he is the president of the American Physical Society this year. When he ran for that office and was elected, he had laid out all the things that he wanted to do as president. And one of them, of course, was to promote physics broadly and to help uh, promote physics to the next generation. Not one word was mentioned about open access. And so as you might expect, when you step into a leadership position, you solve problems that are brought to you, not the ones you think you're supposed to solve. So Michael had to step up, and he has, <clears throat> and he had to learn about open access. So I'll now ask Michael to say a few introductory remarks. Thanks, Bob. Um, and they, they will, really will be a few introductory remarks. Um, can I have slide 82? <laughs> um, so it's a pleasure to be here. Um, the digital revolution has really changed the way science is done. Uh, from making scientific information more readily and widely available and, in glo and enabling global collaboration to producing massive data sets and allowing researchers around the world to access them and make their own discoveries. The digital revolution has not, however, changed what science is. And that's what's so important about this meeting. And I think what science is is best captured in the 350-year-old motto of the Royal Society, which we all know, right? How many people know it? Do we, this is my clicker question. Nullius in verba. Nullius in verba. Uh, take no one's word for it. And I think that really encapsulates what science is all about. Science involves taking data, testing ideas, reproducing experiments, vetting results, and most of all, constant scrutiny and quality control. Now, the Royal Society wouldn't have called it quality control. That's a new word. Um, to ensure the integrity of the process and the information that's produced. Now, the digital revolution also brought with it, um, these are probably my words, uh, although I'm, I'm happy to put them on someone else, what, what we call the internet mentality. Information is free, or information wants to be free. It's, everybody's heard that one, right? And, um, and perhaps those words are said because information is now a commodity and uh, the cost of disseminating information, at least according to Google, is less than a dollar per terabyte per year. Uh, it's probably even less than that. I was on a NRC committee a few years ago and we had a presentation by Google and uh, they were saying that's how much it costs to, to host, to provide a terabyte of information per year. And um, the last time I looked, the Library of Congress was 20 terabytes. And so that means that the cost of the Library per, of, of Congress should be $20 a year those damn tax and spend Democrats, <laughs> you know, make the, and of course we know that, that, that all of this is nonsense, that, uh, that bits may be cheap, but trusted information is not. And uh, that applies both to open access in publishing and, and to big data. So the challenge is to make sure that the digital revolution enhances science, making it even more of a force for the advancement of society and civilization, rather than lessening its impact or even destroying it. I mean, imagine that uh, we didn't have journals and everybody just put their data on the internet. We all were just drinking from this massive uh, fire hose. Uh, is that an advancement or is that uh, uh, going backwards? And so um, as scientists, I think we're the keepers of the flame. Uh, 
of science. And we are the ones who know best how to make sure that the digital revolution is a force, a positive force for science. And open access and open data are two of the critical issues facing us today where we must come together uh, and inform those who are going to create and make the policies and the mechanisms to make sure that those policies and mechanisms enhance science. Because the digital revolution definitely has that possibility. When I think um, about the Sloan Digital Sky Survey, I was involved in the Sloan Digital Sky Survey, um, it is the most productive astronomical telescope in the world for the last five years. And it's not taking data anymore. It produced a tremendous database that's more productive. The secondary use of that Sloan data is more productive than the Keck telescopes, than uh, the Hubble Space Telescope. So the power of the digital revolution to uh, advance science is very, very great. So this is uh, one reason uh, why the APS is proud to help bring together the stakeholders here to discuss these critical issues. Because I think it's really important that the scientists inform the policymakers on what's required to make sure that the digital revolution is a positive force uh, for science. The other one, of course, uh, and some of you, uh, probably most people in the room know this, that the American Physical Society's mission, uh, we have a charming little phrase, advancing and diffusing the knowledge of physics. And uh, we really take that seriously. And uh, we do so in large measure by publishing. Uh, we publish uh, major physical, physics journals. And so this issue of open access for us is an existential issue because it gets right at the core of what we are. And so I look forward to sitting here and, and hearing what uh, people have to say about uh, treating the issues of both open access and open data because they are so important and they're going to be shaping the future of science and I hope in a positive way. And it's the scientists who can make that happen. So thank you very much.